four, three, two, one. Peace and blessings, everyone out there. This is Black Ice sitting in for the messenger also as well, representing Team Truth Hour, poet, and um, the all the camps, brothers and sisters, that's teaching the truth of the word of God. So tonight's lesson is the greatest story never told part one. Again, the greatest story never told part one. So as we told our YouTube listenership, we're asking you to do the same thing. Go and get your Bible. Go and get your paper. Go and get your pen and write down these notes because we don't want you to leave from this lesson saying, well, I heard Brother Black Eyes say. I want you to say we read, brothers and sisters, in this book, this information. And so if anyone has a dispute with something that you can take them to the Bible and show them, then the dispute is not with you. The dispute is what they have with the word of God, brothers and sisters. So if you have a desire to know God for yourself, if you have a desire to know this word, brothers and sisters, then I implore you, preaching is good. It's okay. But learning the word of God, educating yourself on the word of God, is the only way that you can know what God wants you to do. And the only way that you can know that if what you're doing is not lining up with the word of God, brothers and sisters. So I'll go ahead and read this to you, Sister Key Israel. If you can put the what we believe in the truth hour inbox and I can read that off to the people to let them know for the first time. If they're just tuning in to this show for the first time then you can understand what you are getting into by listening to this show. First of all, we are Bible-based Christians, brothers and sisters. There's a difference between Bible-based Christians and Roman Christianity. There's a difference between the two. So let me go ahead and read off what we believe here on the Bible show, Truth Hour, brothers and sisters. The Truth Hour Bible class is an online social media Bible-based ministry. We teach the uncut Word of God, as it is written in the Bible. Now, our Bible of choice is the King James Version of the Bible. And we teach this word line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, as it is written in Isaiah, the 28th chapter, verse 10. Our mission is to lead as many souls to Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, as possible. So that through the word of God and through keeping the commandments and the statutes and laws, they may receive salvation. Our motto is, if you cannot read it, then do not believe it. Now, brothers and sisters, here is our nine point of what we believe. Point one, we believe in the name Jesus. We have no dispute with the use of the other names, but prefer to use the English name Jesus because English is the language in which our people speak. Number two, we believe that Jesus, Yahshua alone, is our Lord and our Savior. Number three, we believe in the Sabbath day, which is from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, according to what's written in this book called the Bible. Number five, we believe that we, the so-called African-American, and those who were spread throughout the world through the transatlantic slave trade, are among those Israelites and the statutes and laws and commandments of this book apply to us. Number six, we believe that we must still keep the law to the best of our ability. Number seven, we don't believe in the lost books, brothers and sisters, because if the books were lost, there could be nothing that you can inform me about it because you wouldn't be able to find it. Number eight, we believe in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And when you teach according to the word of God, you must use both Old and New Testaments. You can't be a New Testament Christian and or an Old Testament scholar. You got to be both, brothers and sisters, both. We do not believe in Sunday Sabbath service according to this word of God, because he said the seventh day was a Sabbath day. So every day can't be the Sabbath day. We don't believe in the Trinity because according to John 1 and 1, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with the God and the word was God. We don't see nothing else in the beginning with those two. So two and try do not match with one another. 
We do not believe in the images of the cross. We do not believe in the holidays that originated in the worship of other gods. We do not believe in speaking in tongues without an interpreter, according to what's written in this book, brothers and sisters. We do not believe in women praying or reading the word of God without a head covering, according to the word of God. And we do not believe in men reading and, and, and um, praying, brothers and sisters, with a head covering. According to the word of God, you dishonoreth your head, brothers and sisters. So with that being said, let us go ahead and teach this word of God. Today's subject again is the greatest story never told, part one. Jesus, Yahshua, the God of the Old Testament. Let's get right into our lesson. Since we discuss the life and existence of Jesus this time of year, it is important for us to know the full story, brothers and sisters. And in order for us to know the full story, we must go back to the beginning and ask the right questions to get the right answers. Did Jesus, Yeshua, exist before Mary? If so, where can we find the evidence in the Bible or the word of God? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to bring to you the greatest story never told, part one, the untold story of Jesus, the God of the Old Testament. Let's go ahead and turn our Bibles to the book of John, the 10th chapter. The book of John, the 10th chapter, brothers and sisters. Turn your Bibles to the book of John, the 10th chapter. That's going to be the first place that we go today on our show. And again, we read the word, brothers and sisters. So we don't just want you to listen to what we say. We want you to go over this word of God with us. To the book of John, the 10th chapter, this is where we're going to start our lesson today. And I'm going to give you a brief moment to get there. And again, I'm reading and I'm um, teaching today. So... You guys bear with me along the show. So John, the 10th chapter is where we're going to start. And let's see where we're going to go, brothers and sisters. Now, let's put Jesus on the witness stand and hear from him about his own existence. Jesus gave us a clue about his existence in a conversation that he had with the Pharisees. There were no Israelites before Jacob. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob was the son of Isaac and Isaac was the son of Abraham. What did Jesus have to say about Abraham to the Pharisees? So let's go to, I'm sorry, that's John the eighth chapter, guys. John the eighth chapter, verses 51 through 58. John the eighth chapter. Verses 51 through 58. John 8, 51 through 58. All right. All right, let's go. And it reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou has a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets and thou sayest, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me of whom you say, that he is your God, yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Brothers and sisters, it seems like Jesus is making a bold claim right here. Jesus is telling the Pharisees 
that he was here before Abraham. Well, wait a minute. I thought Jesus came through Mary. Yes, he did come through Mary, brothers and sisters. But today is the greatest story never told. Jesus, the God of the Old Testament. So Abraham was wrote, written about in the Old Testament. So now, brothers and sisters, Jesus is saying his existence was before Abraham, which would mean that he existed during the time of the Old Testament. Well, let's keep searching these scriptures, brothers and sisters. Let's go to John, the 10th chapter. Now, let's keep on with this search that we are on. Let's hear more words from the master himself. We still got Jesus on the witness stand. Jesus, Yeshua, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help me God. So help you God. Of course, Jesus cannot lie. So his answer is yes. So let's go to John the 10th chapter, verses 30 through 35. John the 10th chapter, verses 30 through 35. And it reads, I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. So this means that it wasn't the first time that they took up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Jesus answered them. Is, this, is it not written in your law? I said you are all gods. Wait a minute. In the law, Jesus was not here in the flesh. But he's making another bold statement. And he said, is it not written in your law? I said you are all gods. And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture Cannot be broken, brothers and sisters. So we got to do some research here. So now let's go to the law that reads, you are all God's children of the most high God. Let's go to the book of Psalms, the 82nd chapter. Turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, the 82nd chapter. We're talking about the greatest story never told. Jesus, the God of the Old Testament. And this is why it perplexes me, brothers and sisters, when a lot of Christians today, they say, well, we don't have to read that Old Testament no more. We ain't in the Old Testament no more. The same God that gave you the law in the Old Testament is the same one who you praise and worship in the New Testament, brothers and sisters. But we're going to search this thing down. Let's go to the book of Psalms, the 82nd chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. Now, where can we find in the scriptures or the Old Testament where Jesus says, Ye are gods. Could it be that before he was known as Jesus, he was here? Let's go and look and read Psalms 82 verses 1 through 6. Psalms 82 verses 1 through 6. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty and he judges amongst the gods. So here we got gods, which is plural, brothers and sisters. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. And why do they walk in darkness, brothers and sisters? The same reason why many people walk in darkness today, because they don't have this word in them, brothers and sisters. They only have what pastor said. They only have what mama told me. They only have what I heard my grandmama say. So they walk in darkness, brothers and sisters. Because, see, when you start to learn something that you did not know, Knowledge enters into the brain. And when knowledge enters into the brain, you say things like, oh, now I see what you're talking about. Well, before you could see, there was darkness in existence here, brothers and sisters. But now the light has entered into your brain, causing your eyes to be open. And this is what we do on this show. We make the blind see, brothers and sisters, the spiritually blind see. 
The spiritually deaf hear and the spiritually dumb speak, brothers and sisters. And we bring the spiritually dead to life with the word of God. All praise is due to the most high God, brothers and sisters. It says they walk on in darkness at verse five. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said you are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Brothers and sisters. Sounds like these are the words that Jesus spoke in the book of John. Let's go and continue our search because, see, we got to see and prove that Jesus was here before Abraham, that he was here in the beginning. We got to prove this. And the only way we can prove this is with the word of God. So open up your Bibles and go to the book of John, the first chapter. Now, if these words are the words of Jesus, this would mean that Jesus was the God that the prophets dealt with in the scriptures. If this is true, this would mean that there are two beings that are in the Godhead. Two beings that go by the title of God. Two beings, brothers and sisters, that was here in the beginning. Well, let's go ahead and read it. John, the first chapter. The book of John, the first chapter, and we're going to start at verse one, book of John one and one, and we're going to go one through three. In the beginning was the word. Wait a minute. Jesus, Yeshua was here in the beginning. When was the beginning, black eyes? The Bible does not say. We can't put a time on it because it does not say when the beginning was, but whenever it was. Jesus was already here. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same, talking about the word. See, anytime, brothers and sisters, you read a chapter, you must establish the subject matter. The subject matter of John, the first chapter, is the word. He is the subject. So anytime you see the personal pronoun, he or him or the same, it's referring to the subject, which is the word. So you can actually interject or replace the personal pronouns with the term, the word or the title, the word. It says the same, which is talking about the word, was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Speaking of the word. And without him, the word was not anything made that was made. So who made, brothers and sisters, the birds and the bees and the trees? Who made man? It was the word that did all of the creation, according to what I just read. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm not telling you what I feel. I'm not telling you what I believe. I'm only sharing with you what I'm reading in this word. It says all things, brothers and sisters, were made by him. And without him, speaking of the word, was not anything made that was made. So now we got Jesus placed in the beginning. We got Yahshua all the way in the beginning with the father. But let's continue reading. Now let's go back to the beginning. If Jesus made the, the, the world, brothers and sisters, if Jesus was responsible for making everything that was made, there has to be somewhere we can verify this in the scripture or the Old Testament. Well, let's go back to Genesis 1 and we're going to read two verses, verses 26 and 27. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Many people say, well, black eyes, who was this talking? Who was the let us? Who was this doing the talking? Well, he's the word, right? He's the spokesperson for the Godhead. Well, let's read. Genesis 1 and 26. And God said, remember, God is a family. The word God comes from the word Elohim, which is a uni plural word. Just like you have the word man. Man could mean one individual or it could mean the whole species. Well, in this term, the term God consists of two that were in the Godhead, the same two that we just read about in the beginning, which was the word and the father. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and all over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. So brothers and sisters, both male and female are man. Man is the species, male and female are the genders. But again, who was this doing the talking? Well, if it was something being created, and according to John, the first chapter, all things were made by him, then this is the son or the word, brothers and sisters. Doing the creating with the father's permission. We don't want to leave the father out or we don't want you to think or get the idea that we're trying to diminish the role of the father. No, brothers and sisters, Jesus could not do anything without the father's permission. So, but again, at this point, there is no father and no son. It's just God. Two and the Godhead or the God family. Let's continue reading. Let's go to Genesis, the second chapter. Now, who is the God talking in Genesis 1. Remember, we just read in the book of John, all things were made by him. So let's go to the second chapter, the first verse, which man put as the fourth verse. Uh, well, what are you saying, Brother Black Eyes? Well, this is what I'm saying. Genesis, the first chapter, should have ended at Genesis, the second chapter, the third verse. And Genesis, the second chapter, should have started at verse four. I'm going to give you an example. Let's read Genesis, the second chapter, verse four. Remember, man is the one that put the numbers to the verses up in here. It wasn't there originally. <clears throat> These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. Now, what does it mean by heavens? There are three heavens, according to Genesis, the first chapter. The earth is a heaven. And what you look up when you see the sky, the sun, moon, and stars, and where the birds fly, that's another heaven, brothers and sisters. And then we got the third heaven, which is where the father and the son resides, brothers and sisters. Okay? So we want you to understand that when it says the heavens, it's talking about the first two, brothers and sisters. So now let's go ahead and read. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heaven and the earth. Wait a minute. Now it's saying Lord God. There is something interesting going on here, brothers and sisters. It's saying Lord God. Well, up until this point, it was just saying God, in the beginning, God created this. In the beginning, God created that. In the beginning, God created this. Now, all of a sudden, you get Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Now, it says, Lord God. Hmm. Something interesting happened, brothers and sisters, right now. Um, let's see what that is. So, I want to see right now if I have another book up, up in here. See if I can find it. I don't think that I can find it, but... If you have, oh, here it is right here, brothers and sisters. Here it is right here. Let's go to the Jehovah Witnesses book, the New World Translation, which is their translation of the Bible. I want to show you something up in here. I want to show you something up in here, brothers and sisters. Uh, let's go to Genesis 2 and 4 in the Jehovah Witness Bible. I want to show you something, something that they don't even know. Genesis 2 and 4. For the first time in this book, the word Jehovah appears. For the first time in this book, at Genesis 2 and 4. The same place that the word Lord God appeared. Now let's go and see who's doing the creating here. It says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth. And the time of their being created and the day that Jehovah God made earth and the heaven. So we have a correlation here between the word 
who made all things, Lord God, in the King James Version, that made the earth and the heavens, and Jehovah, that was responsible for making the heavens, brothers and sisters. We have a correlation between these three being the same individual. And this is why we say Jesus, the God of the Old Testament, all things were made by him. Let's go ahead and continue this word, brothers and sisters. Let's go ahead and continue this word. Let's go to Isaiah, the 45th chapter, Isaiah 45. The word is a creator. He was given the permission and authority to create the heavens and the earth. Isaiah 45 and 18. Isaiah 45 and 18. <clears throat> Isaiah 45 and 18. And it reads, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Brothers and sisters, who is this I am? Who is this Lord? Who is the one that in the beginning, according to the book of John 1 and 1, was in the beginning with God? All things were created by him. We're talking about Jesus, Yeshua, the unknown God, the God of the Old Testament or the word, brothers and sisters. This is who we're talking about. But we got more proof. And we got more evidence. And the reason why we stress this so much is because we want to be so quick with doing away with the very law that he gave us. We want to be so quick with doing away with the very law that he gave us, brothers and sisters. And we can't do that. Yes, we can't do that, brothers and sisters. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Somebody's at my door, but we live on the air, so uh, I ain't going to be able to get that. So let's go to the book of Isaiah 45 and 18. The book of Isaiah 45 and 18. Oh, we did that one. Let's go ahead and move forward to our next scripture. Let's go to John 5. Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to put Jesus back on the witness stand. Let's go to John 5. We're going to put Jesus back on the witness stand. And we're going to find out, brothers and sisters, what Jesus had to say about his father to those whom he was speaking of. But we're going to put John on the witness stand first. And we're going to talk and see what John had to say, brothers and sisters. John, the fifth chapter, verses 36 through 37. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me make sure I got it right. Uh, let me see. I'm sorry. Let's go to John 1 and 18. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit distracted because somebody's ringing my doorbell, but let's go to the book of John 1 and 18. The book of John 1 and 18. Let's, let's, let's put John on the witness stand and find out about the father. Because remember, Abraham walked with God. Moses talked with God. The children of Israel, it, they, it, God communicated with them. John 1 and 18, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. So wait a minute. Let's write this down. Put that on your paper. No man has seen God at any time. So if we can find somewhere where somebody saw God, and this is referring to the father, or saw a God, we know it's not the father. But remember, there's two that go by the title God. So that's John's account. Now, let's go to Jesus's account. Let's go to the book of John, the fifth chapter. The book of John, the fifth chapter. And let's go down to verses 36 and 37. Book of John, the fifth chapter, verses 36 and 37. Jesus, has anybody ever talked to your father? Has anybody ever seen your father? I'm putting you on the witness stand. Remember, Jesus, you are under oath. We need you to tell the truth. 
Let's look what Jesus' answer is to this question. John 5, 36 and 37. But I have a greater witness than that of John. Remember, we just read the book of John 1 and 18 and we saw John's account. He said, but I have a greater witness than that of John for the works which the father have given me to finish the same works that I do. Bear witness of me that the father have sent me and the father himself, which have sent me, has borne witness of me. You have never heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Wait a minute, Jesus. You're saying that nobody has ever heard your father's voice at any time, nor seen his shape? Well, that would be a conflict. Because see, the God of Israel dealt with Moses. God dealt with Abraham, Isaac. The God of Israel dealt with Jacob, brothers and sisters. The God of Israel dealt with Joseph. We got a conflict here. Or what appears to be a conflict. But remember, there are two that go by the title God, according to John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. We just got to see which God Israel was dealing with in the Old Testament. That's all. But if it's a God that they could talk to, and if it's a God that they could see, then it is not the Father. But it is the Son. Jesus, the unknown God, the God of the Old Testament. Okay, I'm going to read that one more time. Jesus said it, um, John 5 and 37, and the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. You have never heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So let's go back to the Old Testament and see if somebody heard the voice of a God or saw the shape of a God. Let's go to the book of John. I'm sorry, the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter, the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter. And we're going to start at verse one. Exodus, the 24th chapter. What we're looking for in this particular book and chapter and verses is if someone actually talked to and saw God. If they did, it wasn't the father because Jesus cannot lie. And he said, no man has ever seen my father or heard his voice at any time. Exodus 24, verse one. And he said unto Moses, who is the he here? It is the Lord. And if he's talking to Moses, then we know it cannot be the father because Jesus said, no one has ever heard my father's voice at any time. But let's continue reading. And he said unto Moses, come up unto the Lord, you, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, neither shall the people go up with him. Let's go down, brothers and sisters, to Exodus 24 and 9 and find out what actually happened. After the Lord spoke to Moses, Moses heard his voice to understand his instructions. And now let's see what Moses does and see if they heard, or we actually know he already heard, if they saw a God. Exodus 24 and 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. That's 74 people. Verse 10. And they saw the God of Israel. Jesus said, no man has ever seen my fathers at any time or heard his voice. Verse 10, and they saw the God of Israel. If they saw a God, it wasn't the father. It was the son, brothers and sisters. It was the word, brothers and sisters. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. So, brothers and sisters, I ask you, who is the God of Israel? Who is this Jehovah that Moses was dealing with all this time? According to what Jesus taught us in the book of John, the fifth chapter, verses 37, 
No man has ever seen my father or heard his voice at any time. So the God that they saw was Jesus, Yahshua. He just did not go by that name at that time. He went by the name Jehovah. So who is Jehovah? Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah is the son of God and not the father or the word that is in the Godhead, brothers and sisters. I know that's going to be difficult for a lot of people in the Jehovah Witness faith to hear, but we're reading it right here in the word of God ourselves, brothers and sisters. Let's go ahead and continue reading. Let's go ahead and continue reading, brothers and sisters. Let's go and find some more evidence to prove our case. Let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Even the father calls Jesus God. I'm going to say that again. Even the father calls the son God. Mm. I would never put the son above the father. Although he himself said, I thought it not robbery to be equal with God because when he was in the Godhead, there was just one. They were one, brothers and sisters, when he was in the Godhead. But when he put down his Godship and came down to this earth to become man, then they were no longer equal, brothers and sisters. Let's go ahead and continue reading. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10, brothers and sisters. Turn your Bibles. I'll give you a little bit of time to get there. I know some of our brothers and sisters are not as familiar with navigating through this Bible as others are. But let's go ahead. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Hebrews 10, 1 through 10. And it reads... I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. This is not what I want. I want Hebrews, the first chapter. And see, that's the difficulty of when you're by, by yourself without a reader, brothers and sisters. Hebrews, the first chapter, verses 1 through 10. I'm speedballing, Sister Key Israel. Forgive me for that. Hebrews, the first chapter, um, verses 1 through 10. God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in times past, and to the Father by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who is the he that this book is talking about? It's talking about the Son. It's talking about Yahshua. It's talking about Jesus, brothers and sisters. Let's read it again. God, who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he, talking about the son, has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he, talking about the son, made the worlds. Interesting, brothers and sisters. Let's read more about this son. And it goes on to say, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins. So we know it's talking about the son. Sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels. Being made so much better than the angels as he have by inheritance, obtain a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, you are my son. This day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. He's never said that to any of the angels, brothers and sisters. Never. But he did say that to the son. Let's go ahead and continue reading. And again, when he bringeth in the firstborn into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So his angels, brothers and sisters, are ministers. But unto the son he saith, thy throne, O God. Wait a minute. Here's the father calling the son 
a God? Something is going on here, brothers and sisters. We got to have this thing and keep to the account of what's going on here. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. So the Son is not only a God, but the Son has a kingdom and a throne, brothers and sisters. Hebrews 1 and 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. Here it is again. This backs up what we read in John, the first chapter, that all things were made by him and without anything that was not nothing made that was made. And it also backs up Genesis, the second chapter, verse four. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth and the day that the Lord God created the heavens and the earth. All of this backs up. And this is why the book says you must read this word here a little. There a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, brothers and sisters. Let's continue reading. The greatest story never told. They never made a movie about this. Because they don't know about this, brothers and sisters. It's just like starting our history when we landed on the shores of America. This is as far back as America in the history books takes the history of the so-called African-American or the Negro people, which are the Israelites that the Bible wrote and spoke about. But we know beyond the shores of America, we have an illustrious history of kings and queens and prophets, brothers and sisters, pyramid builders and Roman Colosseum builders, brothers and sisters. Let's continue reading. We got a few more places in this lesson that we must go. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Let's do some comparisons between the God mentioned in the Old Testament and Jesus, Yeshua, in the New Testament. Now, in the book of Isaiah, it is written that our Lord, our God, will have his way prepared by one crying in the wilderness. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 3. We're going to make some comparisons between the God of the Old Testament and Jesus the Christ. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Let's go ahead and read. And it reads, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith the Lord. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And this is what we've experienced today. You want to know the reason why the so-called African-American is in the condition that we are in? Because the Lord has given us double for all of our sins. We came right up out of Egypt and in the wilderness, we built a golden calf. We turned away God for the gods of every nation that we were held in captivity in, brothers and sisters. And the first law of the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt have no other gods beside me. It says right here, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Verse three, but the... The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let's see if we can find the same thing in the New Testament, brothers and sisters, where the way is made straight for the coming of the Lord. Let's go to the book of Mark, brothers and sisters, the book of Mark, the first chapter. And we're going to read those same amount of verses, one through three. Mark the first chapter, and we're going to read verses one through three. We're doing a comparison between the God of the Old Testament, the Lord, and Jesus the Christ. Mark one, one through three. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
As it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And that was none other than John the Baptist. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Don't you see the comparison between the Lord God of the Old Testament and the one who will come to be known as Jesus, Yeshua, in the New Testament? Let's go ahead and look at a little bit more comparisons. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 44th chapter. Now, in the book of Isaiah, the Lord talks about being the first and the last. This was long before Jesus came into the world through Mary. Could it be that this God, that this Lord of the Old Testament was the same one who would come in the flesh? Sounds very familiar to me, brothers and sisters. Isaiah, the 44th chapter. And we're going to read one verse, verse six, Isaiah 44. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 6, Isaiah 44 and 6, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel. Remember in Exodus 24, he was called the God of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and besides me, there is no God. Brothers and sisters. And of course, he was speaking in terms of this earth, brothers and sisters. I am the first, I am the last, and beside me, there is no God. Remember, there was only one Godhead. They both went by the same title, God. God is uni, uni plural, containing two. But he's the spokesman, brothers and sisters. Now let's go to the book of Revelations. And let's see if we can read something else about Jesus calling himself the first and the last. Revelations, the first chapter, and we're going to go to verse 8. Revelations, the first chapter, and we're going to go to verse 8, and it reads, I am Alpha, beginning, and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Let's go down, stay in that same chapter, and let's go to verse 18. Revelations 1 and 18. I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of all hell and of death. Now, let's go up one verse to verse 17 and read that because we wanted to establish that we're talking about Jesus, brothers and sisters. Now, let's go to Revelations 1 and 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. The same thing that the Lord said of himself in the Old Testament, brothers and sisters. We're going here, brothers and sisters, for those who want to say we're no longer have to apply by the law. That was back then. That was the Mosaic law. No, brothers and sisters, Moses didn't create no laws. The Lord created the law, gave it to Moses to give to us. So stop giving Moses credit for something that he did not do, brothers and sisters. This is the Lord's law, the Lord's statutes, his commandments. Don't let anyone come and tell you anything different. Let's go to Revelations, the 22nd chapter, verses 12 and 13. Revelations, the 22nd chapter, verses 12 and 13. See, brothers and sisters, this lesson, Jesus, the unknown God, the God of the Old Testament, it's too much information for you to get around it. It's too wide. It's too tall for you to get over, too deep for you to get under it. This is... The uncut word of God. And you may not hear this in many other places, brothers and sisters. And this is why we ask you to share this live video and share this live feed. Because we want other people to get what you're getting every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Bible Show Truth Hour. Revelation 22. And we're going to read two verses. 12 and 13. Revelation 22, 12 and 13. And behold. I come quickly and my reward is with me. What is his reward? 
is everlasting life. To those who died in Christ and lived in Christ. But it is the lake of fire, brothers and sisters. To those who did not keep his statutes, laws, and commandments. And this is what Satan is trying to do. Satan is trying to steal your salvation by making you think that you don't have to abide by the statutes, laws, and the commandments of God anymore. We don't have to uh, kill any more animals, brothers and sisters, for sin because when Jesus died, the law of animal sacrifice is the law that ended. That was what was nailed to the cross. <clears throat> that was the reason, brothers and sisters, why the Bible said that the veil was ripped in twain. Because the veil is that thing that the ministers and the prophets and the priests used to take the blood that they dipped their finger in and sprinkle it on the veil. So when Jesus died and the veil was ripped in twain, that ended animal sacrifice. So when you read anything in the Bible talking about the law ending, that law is the law of animal sacrifice. Let's educate ourselves on the word of God. Revelations 22, 12 and 13. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be, as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The same thing that the Lord God in the book of Isaiah said, brothers and sisters. It's the same being, brothers and sisters. It's the same being. Let's go one more place and do this comparison between the God of the Old Testament and Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, and the New Testament, the one who came in the flesh through Mary. Let's go to Zechariah, the 12th chapter. Zechariah, the 12th chapter. Now, the Lord gives a prophetic word to Zach uh, Zechariah about the end time. Zechariah, the 12th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. Zechariah, the 12th chapter. And we're going to start this thing, brothers and sisters, at verse 1. And it reads. <clears throat> The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and formed the spirit of man within him. The Lord did all this. John 1 and 3, all things were made by him. Without him, there was nothing made that was made. God breathed into the nostrils of man and man became a living soul. So what was he before he was a living soul? He was just a dead soul. Before God put his spirit inside of him. Let's read that again. Isaiah, I'm sorry, Zechariah, the 12th chapter, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. It was all Jesus, brothers and sisters. From day one, it was all Jesus, brothers and sisters. Let's go down, brothers and sisters, and read a little bit more in the book of Zechariah. Same chapter, but let's go to verses 9 through 10. See, when you are part of a crime that's been committed, and the police comes, and the detectives comes, and investigate, they start putting out a description of the suspect. So they may say that he's six feet tall. They may say that he has dark hair. They may say that he has brown eyes. They may say that he was wearing a red shirt and blue jeans. They may say that he was wearing white gym shoes. See, brothers and sisters, the suspect has to fit the description. So we're looking for the description of Jesus, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And everything that is described in the Old Testament is comparing with Jesus in the New Testament. He fits the description of the God of the Old Testament, of Jehovah in the Old Testament, of Lord God in the Old Testament. 
Let's go to Zechariah 12, 9 and 10. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that came against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So now this God, this Lord is talking about he's going to be pierced, brothers and sisters. Can we read about one in the New Testament that was pierced? Let's go and read about it. Let's go in the book of Psalms. Before we go in the New Testament, let's stay in the Old Testament. We read the account of Zechariah. Let's read the account of David. Psalms 22 and 16. We're looking for one that was pierced. Psalms 22 and 16. Psalms 22 and 16. And it reads, brothers and sisters. I want to give you guys a chance to get there. For dogs have come past me. The assembly of the, I'm sorry, uh, no, I, I want to make sure that I got the right one. 22 and, yep, 16. All right. It says, for dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. They pierce my hands and my feet. This is the Lord talking, brothers and sisters. David wrote of it. Zechariah wrote of it. And there's only one individual in this book between the pages of Genesis and Revelations that fit this description. And this is why we call this lesson the greatest story never told Jesus, the unknown God of the Old Testament. Now, we read it in Zechariah. We read it in Psalms. Let's go and read it in the New Testament. John 19 and 34. John 19 and 34. Let's identify the one that was pierced, brothers and sisters. John 19, 1 through 4. Brothers and sisters, we could have stopped this lesson a long time ago. But we want to show you how to research this lesson here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. When we give you scriptures, we give you so many scriptures, brothers and sisters, that can't nobody come and deny this truth. John 19 and 34. John 19 and 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out. Blood and water. Jesus was pierced. As it's spoken of, he would be in Zechariah and Psalms. But we ain't finished. We got one more place to go. Let's go to the book of Revelations, the first chapter, 1 through 7. The book of Revelations, the first chapter, 1 through 7. What are you going to do with this? When you say we don't need the Old Testament no more. That was that old writings back then. All we got to do is worry about what's in the New Testament. Well, the same one that gave it to you in the New Testament is the same one that gave it to you in the Old Testament. And you can't even understand the New Testament until you go back and find out where they got it from in the Old Testament. Brothers and sisters, Paul did not write anything new. Paul wrote letters containing what was already written. He didn't come giving us a new gospel. He didn't come, brothers and sisters, giving us a new book. They called it a book, but it's actually letters, brothers and sisters, that he wrote to the churches and his helpers. And what was contained in those letters was, was what was already written in the scripture. And this is why it's important for us to know the truth, brothers and sisters. Let's go to our last place, Revelations, the first chapter, verse 7. It says, Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. 
Even so, amen. If you don't know by now who this is talking about, brothers and sisters, I got a little bit more information for you. If you don't know who this is talking about after we've given you all this information. Let's go to the book of John, the fifth chapter again. The same God who later became Yahshua or Jesus is the same God that Moses spoke to and he to him. Moses called him Jehovah or Yahweh. So this tells us that we can't even pray to Jehovah because Jehovah is the son and not the father. And let me ask you a question that nobody has ever asked you. When Jesus was here in the flesh, did you ask? ever read about him praying to a God named Jehovah? Did Jesus ever invoke the name Jehovah out of his mouth as it relates to his father? Surely Jesus knew the name. Why didn't he use it? Because it did not apply to the one that was in heaven while he was on earth. It only applied to himself when he was the God in the Old Testament that dealt with Moses. But we're going to read a little bit about it. Let's go to John, the fifth chapter, verses 45 through 47. John, the fifth chapter, verses 45 through 47. I know some of y'all just said, man, that was deep. I never thought about that before. Well, brothers and sisters, I had never thought about it before either until it just came to me. Like, man, Jesus never called the name Jehovah. That's interesting as it relates to the Father. John, the fifth chapter, verses 45 through 47. It says, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Wait a minute. Jesus is telling you that Moses wrote about him? Well, who did Moses write about? The God that Moses dealt with was Jehovah. That's who Moses wrote about. So Jesus is informing you and telling you that Jesus was the God of the Old Testament, that he was the Jehovah that Moses wrote about. Let me read it again. It says, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Because his writings are the words of the Lord, brothers and sisters. As he dictated it to him in the Old Testament. This is getting good, brothers and sisters. This is getting so good. Please share this lesson. Let's go to the book of John, the first chapter, verse 10. What does Jesus mean by Moses wrote of him? How could this be? Let us go back to the book of John and get another clue. John 1 and 10. John 1 and 10. Remember, only one God came to this earth in the flesh, and that was the one who became known as the Son. It says, John 1 and 10. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Well, wait a minute. I thought the father made the world. That's not what this is saying. It's saying that the son did it. But we know that it was done on authority of the father's permission. I'm going to read that again. He was in the world, got to be the son we're talking about, and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. So Jesus is the one that did the creating, brothers and sisters. He was the one that set this thing in motion. But the world he created, brothers and sisters, ain't the world that we living in today. The world that we living in today is Satan's, Shaitan's world, brothers and sisters. And this is why today he says, love not the world. For anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So let's go ahead and continue, brothers and sisters, with our lesson. Let's go to the book of Psalms 8318. Now, this is what my mother took me to, who is a Jehovah Witness over 50 years. 
who had a problem with me saying that Jehovah was Jesus in the Old Testament, but we just read it in multiple places. But this is what the Jehovah Witnesses are going to try to take you to, to try to prove that Jehovah is the Father. Let's go and see what the Jehovah Witnesses proof is when it comes to this. The name of this lesson is The Greatest Story Never Told, Part 1. Jesus, the unknown God, the God of the Old Testament. <clears throat> Psalms 83, 18. Turn your Bibles to Psalms 83 and 18. That men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. Well, see, I told you that Jehovah was the most high. That's what it says. And it does say that. But brothers and sisters, because we have been blessed with the ability to decipher the word of God, brothers and sisters. We understand what it is saying about Jehovah. It is clearly identifying which of the two that Jehovah actually is. Now, let's see. In heaven, we got the father, we got the son, and then we have the angels which all of the angels are holy and they are spirits. So the angels are holy spirits. So we got the father, the son, the holy spirits. And then we have one among the holy spirits that stand in the presence of the father and the son, which is the holy spirit. Another lesson for another time. Nevertheless, <clears throat> there is no higher than the father in heaven. Jesus sits on his right hand. But when it comes to this earth, brothers and sisters, who was given authority over this earth? We've been reading it the whole night. It was the word that was given the authority over the earth. He is the God of Israel. He is Jehovah, the one that dealt with Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Well, let's read this again now, but let's read it with understanding. That men may know, Psalms 83, 18, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over the, all the earth. Well, if Jehovah was the father, why isn't it written that he's most high over all the heaven and the earth? Because Jesus is not most high in heaven, but he is most high over all the earth. That's the father's domain where he is the most high over brothers and sisters. So make sure you read that part, Jehovah Witnesses, when it says that Jehovah art the most high, but where? Over all the earth, but not in heaven. Let's go ahead and continue with our lesson, brothers and sisters. Jesus, the unknown God, the God of the Old Testament. Now let's go to the book of Exodus, the 13th chapter. Jehovah, the God of Israel, the God of the earth, the same God that accompanied Moses and the children of Israel in the wilderness. Who was this God? Let's read a little bit more evidence. Exodus 13, verses 17 through 22. Exodus 13, verses 17 through 22. Exodus 13, 17 through 22. And it reads. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them. Not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure para the people repent when they see war and they return back to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. Now here is the key of what we're looking for. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. So the Lord was with them. By day, it says to lead them the way. And by night, so he was with them by night in a pillar of a fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud 
by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from the people. So what we're looking for in the New Testament is this cloud that journeyed with them in the wilderness, brothers and sisters. We're looking for the identity of this Lord that went before them by day in the pillar of a cloud. Who was this God in the cloud, brothers and sisters, that accompanied them as they were leaving the land of Egypt? Let's find out who this was. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Let's find out who was the God in the cloud, brothers and sisters. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. This God goes by many names. And let me make sure I got the right one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 10 1 through 5. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud. We just read that. And all passed through the sea. We just read that in the book of Exodus. But who was this Lord, brothers and sisters? Who was this Jehovah that Moses dealt with that appeared to them in the cloud in the wilderness as he accompanied them, brothers and sisters, by day? Who was this God? Let's continue reading. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. That rock that followed them, that cloud that accompanied them, brothers and sisters. It was Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ. He just did not go by that name. He went by the name Jehovah to Moses and the children of Israel. Oh, it gets better, brothers and sisters. It gets better. It gets better, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of John, the 17th chapter. And this is the last place. The book of John, the 17th chapter. Now, it is fitting that we end this lesson tonight with this scripture. We put Jesus on the witness stand one last time. Jesus, are you the God of the Old Testament or the scriptures? Were you indeed in existence before you came in the world in the flesh through Mary? Jesus, tell us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We're going to close this thing out with John, the 17th chapter. John, the 17th chapter, brothers and sisters. We're going to end this with verse 5. Jesus answers and says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee, before the world was. Jesus, brothers and sisters, the unknown God, the God of the Old Testament, the greatest story never told. Jesus is the only God that man has ever heard the voice of, has ever seen the shape of. He put down his Godship, came in the flesh as man, dwelt among men, was crucified, resurrected, returned back to his Godship, and now sits on the right hand of the Father. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the greatest story never told. Part one, Jesus, the unknown God of the Old Testament. I thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for your time. Now, for those who are on YouTube, if you have a Facebook page, please go to our Facebook page, The Truth Hour Bible Show, and like our page. For those who are on Facebook, we ask that you like the page that this came from, The Truth Hour Bible Show, but also go to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel, 
which is Truth Hour TV. Again, Truth Hour TV. Go and subscribe, brothers and sisters, to our YouTube channel, Truth Hour TV. We just put it up. Now, for those who are on YouTube and Facebook Live, if you would like to be added to our text message invite reminder list, which means that you will get a text message right before we go on air with the number 312-719-7310. Text your name and the keywords truth hour. Again, text your name and the keywords truth hour to 312-719-7310. And you will get a text message alert right before we go on air telling you the subject matter and the lesson for that particular night. And um, that way you can remember to tune in. And if you can't see it live, then you can always replay the Facebook Live or go to our YouTube channel, Truth Hour TV. Please subscribe to that. Brothers and sisters, this was just part one. It gets better. Again, this was just part one. Tune in next week for part two. The lesson is already done. It's already here, brothers and sisters. The greatest story never told, part two. Jesus came in the flesh in the Old Testament in the person of Melchizedek. I'm going to say that again. Jesus came in the flesh in the Old Testament in the person of Melchizedek. The greatest story never told, part two.